Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Mile High Church. We are going to sing a song together. So go ahead. We're going to do a song called All the Good. You can feel free to stand up, check out some of the cobwebs. The lyrics are very easy. So they repeat over and over. I cannot do all the good. You'll, you'll learn. Okay, here we go. I cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good that I can do. Easy, right? Here we go. I cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good that I can do. I cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good I can do. I cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good I can do. I cannot do all the good Good that I can do. One more time. I cannot do all the good that the world needs. But the world needs all the good that I can do. And all of you. and our Mile High Band. Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you dancing this morning. (laughs) Welcome to Mile High Church. I hope everyone's taking the best care of themselves possible. We're so grateful to be kicking off another new year here at this church where we believe that there's a mystical thread that runs through all faiths and that we can celebrate each and every one of them. We believe that the sacred is present in every individual. And when we invoke that sacred within ourselves and see it in one another, we can transform the world around us with a greater spiritual joy, peace, and understanding. Does that sound good to you? Yeah, Yeah, it sounds good to me. If you are new here, we love to recite our vision and mission. They're coming up on your screen, and everyone is welcome to say it along with me. Our vision, oneness revealed. A world of love, peace, and abundance for all. And our mission, to serve as a spiritual beacon for personal empowerment and global enlightenment. Our own uh, Dr. Barry isn't with us today, and so um, I have the joy of just sharing a few things going on uh, at the church with you today. Uh, we have this incredible healing ministry led by Reverends Kay Johnson and Linda Rangel, and tonight, the second Sunday of every month, there's a healing light service. It's in person only at 5 p.m. in the vote. It's a wonderful time for a contemplative prayer and just being in the light. I don't know about you, but I could use a bit more of that. Uh, We also have our classes starting the week of January 17th. Our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, believed that this was a teaching philosophy, first and foremost. And what a wonderful opportunity with this new year to sign up for one of our January classes. I'm going to be teaching Beyond Limits online now on Tuesday nights, and it's a totally free course. You can give donations if you want to, and we're even paying those certificate fees this year. And so it's a wonderful opportunity to dive in. Our own Dr. Michelle is teaching a class called Financial financial freedom online. We still have uh, two in-person classes, spiritual practices on Tuesdays with Reverend Zamira and Friday mornings, a class called Self Mastery with Dr. Barry and our own Dr. Patty is teaching practical mysticism online. So it's a great slate of classes. Check those out on our website or there's a QR code on your way out there uh, as well. Um, Lastly, 
um, our hearts were just broken when we heard about these Boulder area fires that were taking place. And so we've set up a special text to give to support families. We'll support families directly where we can and give the excess to the, the local American Red Cross. But our normal text message number is 45888. And if you type in the amount that you want to give mile high, space fire, I know it's not the loveliest language, but space fire, uh, and all of that money we will collect and help folks. So you can do that right now, you can do that later, but we're so grateful to create that and we send all of our love and prayers for everyone. I'm sure there's people here, people that you know that have been affected and we just surround them with love during this time and your spiritual community is here for you. Uh, So with that, it's that time where we go within collectively a spiritual community to sing Surely the Presence together, and we have a beautiful prayer from our own Reverend Simon. Surely the presence of God is in this place. I can feel the mighty power and the grace. I can hear the brush of angel wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence God is in this place. Surely the presence of God is in this place. I can feel the mighty power and the grace. I see glory on each face Surely the presence of God is in this God is. And out of this infinite isness, all things arise. God, the divine, the sacred, the mystery, the beloved. Simultaneously beyond our conceptualization, our languaging, Existing as pure potential, every possibility. And yet, simultaneously near and dear. Closer than every breath, closer than the very heartbeat. God is. And let us in this moment turn from the distinctions and differences which can serve to divide and separate and acknowledge that one, that very living, real presence in, through, around, and as our lives. Where there appears to be lack, where there appears to be limitation, I affirm there is abundance and prosperity. Where there appears to be dis-ease or illness, I affirm that there is a perfect pattern of wellness, wholeness, right functioning and well-being that is ever available to each one of us in exactly the right way. Where there appears to be 
disharmony, disagreement, conflict, anxiety, animosity. I say there is harmony, there is peace, there is compassion, understanding, love. Whatever the seeming problem, difficulty, obstacle, stumbling block, the Divine reveals the way and turns those stumbling blocks into stepping stones. And so I give great thanks. I give great thanks to be a part of this Mile High Church community which literally stands as a beacon which serves as a guide for harmony, compassion, joy. I give thanks for Reverend Joss's message for truly the Divine speaks through him today and allows there to be compassion, harmony, peace, and acceptance. And I give thanks for all who in any way, on any day, gather in synagogue, church, temple, mosque, or out in the beauty of nature to say yes to God, to say yes to an ever abundant good and grace. This is my word and I affirm that it is already fulfilled within the mind of God and as such I release it into that creative process which is the true doer. It is so and so it is. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deep this part of life to the sweetest kind of love get ready get ready my soul everything I've ever done Everything I've ever seen Everything I've lost or won Everything I've ever dreamed Has brought me here To this sacred moment here To the deepest kind of love To the sweetest kind of life Yes, get ready Get ready My soul Cause here I am Than I've ever been before. 
of inspiration come from Carolyn Mace, Intimate Conversations with the Divine. The princess kept stacking mattresses on top of a small pea, yet she could still feel it, which prevented her from sleeping. That pea is our holy interior. We've done our best to cover it over, forget about it, partly deliberately and partly out of ignorance of its essential role in our well-being. Yet the sacred still calls to us. We will never feel quite right, never quite at peace, until we are communicating with our own soul and the cosmos regularly. At the end of the day, we are sacred beings. And from our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, and the essential Ernest Holmes, our highest satisfaction comes from a sense of conscious union with this invisible life, finding such an inward wholeness that all sense of fear and doubt and uncertainty vanishes. Let's not forget 
everyone. Mile High Band, Bijou Barbosa on bass, Mark Marlier on drums, Kent and Rotten Strauss. We love you, Kent. Rob Lowe on piano. Thank you to our production crew. Uh, you, you may have not noticed it on online, but we had a disruption in our sanctuary. Uh, words that should not be spoken in our sanctuary and energy that, that throws us off. And it's a good Good question. You know, when something throws us off in our sanctuary here or in here, what do we do? We, we get back to center, right? We get back to love and we get back to compassion. No one right, no one wrong, holding everyone in that highest truth. And um, that gentleman who I know personally and I know is in pain today, we just send him and surround him with love. So it's back to basics here at Mile High Church, something we love to do each year. Vibrant spiritual living, well springs to well being, the topic today. And I'd like to begin by talking about a moment that happened in August of 1960. A young Air Force officer named Joseph Kittinger took off in a dinky gondola connected to a hot air balloon uh, until he reached a hundred thousand at 3,000 feet. No human being up to that point had ever been to that elevation. Kittinger was the first human being to ever behold the curvature of the earth. And you know, it's interesting with all of these astronauts in the 1960s who started to go uh, to outer, outer space, they were all really expecting to be wowed by everything around them, these new things they were discovering, which they were, of course. But do you know what they were most in awe of? Our own planet. Looking back at our own planet. I loved how Jim Lovell, um, Apollo astronaut, put it. He said, we learned a lot about the moon, but what we really learned was about the Earth. The fact that just from the distance of the moon, you can put your thumb up and you can hide the earth behind your thumb. Everything that you've ever known, your loved ones, your business, the problems of the earth itself, all behind your thumb. Shout out to the Rolling Stones, right? And how insignificant <laughs> we really all are. But then how fortunate we are to have this body and to be able to enjoy living here amongst the beauty of the earth itself. Sacred beautiful earth. Kittinger 
would share with National Geographic that to get up to that height, it required of him four things. Absolute confidence in his team, absolute confidence in his equipment, absolute confidence in himself, and absolute confidence in God. See, there is this place where science and spirituality meet. It's at the vortex to the unknown. There's something powerful that happens when we remove fear of the unknown and instead approach it with anticipation and excitement. And we get that sense of hope. We feel the divine with us. And like a divine explorer, we move forward. And that's what Kittinger did. There's just one problem. He was in that dinky gondola up in that hot air balloon. No spaceships yet. No airplanes that could reach that height. And only one way for him to head down. You know what it was? He had to jump. He had to jump. And he shared... That coming up, it was those four principles that got him there. Getting back down, it was those four principles, but reversed. (laughs) Absolute confidence in God, absolute confidence in himself, absolute confidence in his equipment, and absolute confidence in his team. He shared, just before jumping, I said a prayer, Lord, take care of me now. After the main chute opened, I said, thank you, Lord, for taking care of me during that long fall. The landing is as hard as any of I've ever made in my life, but I'm on the ground apparently in one piece. I'm surrounded by sand, salt, grass, and sage. No Garden of Eden could look more beautiful. The elapsed time since the bailout, 13 minutes, 45 seconds. Now that I'm safely down again, I realize how dependent upon the protection of the Almighty are all seekers of the unknown. Now, where you are, yes, you, in your life today, you may not be about to jump from over 100,000 feet in the air, but I'm willing to bet for each and every person here and watching online, there is a leap before you. There is a precipice that is ready for you to jump. Something that, just like Kittinger, can allow you to see the beauty of the world as it should be seen to be the full adventurer that you are, to step into the grace and power that approaches the unknown, not with fear and trepidation, but with excitement and with a yes. That's what this new year offers us, the opportunity to take a new leap into divine creation. Now, our whole science of mind philosophy is really simple. It's based on a basic premise. You can change your life. 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 You back there, you can change your life. You can change your life. You can change your life. It's such a powerful gift, this thing each and every one of us has called choice. It's a great gift. It's a fragile gift. And in one way, it's kind of a dangerous gift, right? Because with one choice, you could drive yourself or your life in a ditch. You could end your own life. You could say or do something that makes a a relationship non-recoverable. With just one choice, you can bury yourself in mistruths, judgments, and put yourself in a consciousness of hell. However, with just one choice, you can change your life for the better. With just one choice, you can transform every mistruth you've buried yourself under. With just one choice, you can unleash a creative power in your life that allows you to see as the divine sees the beauty of the earth, the beauty of yourself, the beauty of one another. Now, it may be one choice that you have to make every day for the rest of your life, but that's okay. That's how powerful choice is. 
The premise of Science of Mind is that you can change your life. And why and how? Because there is a power for good in this universe greater than you are, and you can use it. There is a power for good in this universe greater than you are, and you can use it. Ernest Holmes tells us, if you will take time daily to sense the presence of life within you, to believe in it, to accept it, it will not be long before the life which you have known will gradually disappear and something new will be born. A bigger, better, and more perfect you. You will pass from death into life, from lack and want into greater freedom, from fear into faith, from a sense of being alone, You will pass into a realization of oneness with everything, and you will rejoice in this oneness. We identify that power for good, and then we learn to use it for definitive purposes in our life. How do we use it? I'm defining it today as wellsprings to well-being. What are the wellsprings to well-being? It's the power of mind. It's the power of love. And it's the power of the genuine within you. The power of mind is that ability to recognize that power for good in the universe all around you. Kittinger would have called it his equipment. It's the principles. It's the way of operating. It's the creative thinking. It's the science and the pragmatism. It's the self-reliance and the willingness to think creatively to transform your life. Katie Milkman is a great behavioral scientist, put out a great book last year called How to Change. Just a good, simple title, How to Change. And she gives us all the scientific information about great ways to change your life, pragmatic stuff. Start by identifying a new beginning. That's why the new year is so powerful metaphorically and symbolically. Start with a new beginning. Use deadlines and set goals to help you in your approach. She talks a lot about gamification, this idea of have fun with your goals. We talk about that when we're doing intention setting here at Mile High. Don't set an intention from a place of your brokenness or not enoughness because you're just going to lead yourself back there. Set an intention from your wholeness to experience your gifts. Milkman tells us the story of the great tennis player Andre Agassi. You remember him? great tennis player, had two phases of his career. This is cute Andre. Isn't he adorable? Look at that mullet. You just want to rub his head. And, and he was an image guy. He would even say, you know, in, in, in this famous commercial, image is everything. And he was a hard hitter. He could serve like nobody else. And yet there was just one problem. He wasn't winning. He was becoming an unseated tennis player, so great in popular culture, but not getting the results he wanted on the court. And he had a meeting with the author of a book, a tennis player that had beaten him several times named Brad Gilbert called Winning Ugly. And Gilbert shared with Agassi that if he had his talent, he'd be owning the tennis tour. And that part of Agassi's problem was that he was always trying to hit a winner. All the time, hitting the heart, the ball as hard as he can. And Agassi recalled that's how his dad taught him to play, is always hit everything as hard as you can. But Gilbert was sharing is he would easily use that against Agassi because you can't win on every shot. Gilbert's advice, stop thinking about yourself And remember your opponent has weaknesses. Instead of succeeding, let your opponent fail. A few months later, Agassi would enter unranked into the U.S. Open and make it all the way to the finals against the the German Michael Stitch. Instead of going for winners, he concentrated on keeping the ball in play. He could hear Gilbert's voice in his head, go for his forehand, and he stayed on task. He hit the ball over and over again to Stitch's forehand, his feeblest shot, and on match point, Stitch missed. Change your thinking, change your life. Change your thinking, change your life. Change your thinking, change your life. 
For those of us who've been in this teaching for a while, let that never be a cliche. Let us never reduce that to simply being a slogan on its own. Change your thinking, change your life. It doesn't just mean turn uh, destitudeness into prosperity or make the negative positive. It's that challenge to every day in your life seek to expand, evolve, and deepen in your thinking and behavior and watch as life transforms around you with the brilliance of this infinite mind. What Holmes would tell us is the greatest discovery anyone ever made and use it for definitive purposes in your life. Change your thinking, change your life every day, every day. The power of mind is the ability to recognize this power for good in the universe all around you and to use it. The power of love is the recognition that this power is within you and within all human beings around you. It sounds really sweet, but it's freaking hard right? To do that. Especially when we're angry. Especially when we're in judgment. Especially when something negative happens that puts us on the outside of love, that throws us off our sanctuary, right? But that's the power of love. It's that ability to recognize the power greater than you are within yourself and within all people. That all are worthy, including you, to be a bastion and a medium, an ambassador for this divine love. And there is no more creative power than to bring it to your life with conscious awareness. I shared it in a sermon last year, but I really want to step in to this affirmation, or I'll call it a divine reminder this year. And the divine reminder is this. There is always something love can do. Always remember There is always something love can do. Always. Always. Will you say that with me? There is always something love can do. In a fight with your spouse, hi honey, (laughs) there is always something love can do. Winning isn't about getting the argument. It's who gets back to love quicker, right? You have a courageous conversation that you need to have with someone in your employment. You don't know how it's going to go. There's always something love can do. You got to go to the doctor's appointment and you don't know what the diagnosis is going to be, but whatever it is, you know you're going to respond to it because there's always something love can do. We look out in the world, even our own cities, fires and uh, pandemics and all of this kind of stuff, and it's frustrating and it's heartbreaking and it's a track. Oh, boy, is it a trek. But there's always something love can do. Remember that with me this year. In those challenging moments when you don't know what to do, know that love does know what to do. Live from that place, and it's amazing the creativity that can take place for you. I love how Rainer Maria Rilke, the great poet, put it. Believe in a love that is being stored up for you like an inheritance. And have faith that in this love there is a strength and a blessing so large that you can travel as far as you wish without having to step outside it. How quick are so many of us to place ourselves outside of the flow of love because of our sense of woundedness, because of our judgment, because of our fear of criticism, what for me is often a sad arrogance of trying to know that I'm right. How quick we can put ourselves out of the flow of love and how important it is, being the most creative power that there is, to allow ourselves to discover the genuine in ourselves and all around us by using this power. The power of mind is about recognizing infinite intelligence all around us, using it for definitive purposes. Power of love is realizing this power in ourselves and in everybody The power of the genuine within you is that willingness. It takes time. It takes depth. It takes a deepening of consciousness. But it's that willingness to allow this power to express itself as you. As you. As you. As you. You know that advice? Just be yourself. We all heard that before. Great advice. 
Sometimes I ask, what the hell is that supposed to mean? <laughs> it's myself that got me in all this trouble in the first place. <laughs> but it's good advice. And, and the reason it's such good advice is because it's based on the most grandest of spiritual ideas. That the infinite, in this wide, vast universe, both inner and outer, is so infinite that it can only express itself uniquely. Oneness isn't sameness, it's the diversity of the expression of uniqueness as each and every one of us. So to be yourself is to identify your true nature with the recognition that if you can be yourself wholly and completely, you have absolutely everything already designed within you to bring about the best self, life, and relationships possible. But boy, how we can fear the genuine within us. Boy, how we can get buried in inhibitions and repressions and fear of judgment. If you really knew me, you wouldn't love me. If you really saw me, you wouldn't like what you saw. Gosh, even if God got a hint about some of the things that go on in here, I'd be in trouble. But no, no. Step into the genuine within yourself and have the boldness to be it unashamed, self-conscious, humble, mind you. And to be that loving, awesome, precious child of the divine that you are. Be it for yourself and be a supportive presence for those around you to be it also. That's the power of mind. That's the power of love. That's the power of the genuine within you. And something so great is we can do this individually, but we can also do it as couples. We can identify this power and use it together. We can identify it as a spiritual community. We can identify with it as a country, as humanity, and we can do incredible things. The uh, United States, with partners around the world, did something so incredible this last year that's still taking place right now that I'm so impressed by that it isn't just a great leap in science, but it's the exact, it's such a beautiful symbol of what our, our teaching is and, and what it's about. And it launched on, on Christmas morning. It's called the James Webb Telescope. Maybe you've seen it in the tickers of news way down on the bottom of the page. Uh, don't quote me on this, but I think I read it's 100 times more powerful than the Hubble Telescope. And this thing launched on Christmas morning with spiritual significance. Remember science and spirituality meeting when they confront the unknown to do amazing things. And this big giant thing that is currently as we speak unfolding itself in outer space to give us information that we've never had before about not only what's out there in the cosmos, but what is right here on earth. And they still have a ways to go. We want to lift them with prayerful consciousness as they have faith in their people and their equipment and in themselves and in God. But what an incredible thing that to me speaks just as much to what our science of mind and spirit philosophy is all about. See, we're based in ancient wisdom. We are based in the mystical truths of all the ages that go back from the beginning of time wherever we can collect them. And yet our focus is forward. Our focus is just as much the brand new as it is the ancient wisdom of our past. And so this launch of this telescope to me, is, is, it's like science of mind in action is what it is, because it's moving into unknown places to discover new things about life, who we are, and the absolute. God, what an incredible thing. And so in science of mind, we have reverence for Moses when he encounters the burning bush. And yet we have just as much reverence when we look at the intricacies of the human genome. We have reverence for the Buddha when he encounters the angel of illusion, Mara, uh, before he achieves enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. But just as much, we fathom when we learn the same anatomy of a star is the same anatomy of our own human bodies and beings. We have reverence for Jesus and his miracles, for the wise men following the star. And yet we have just as much reverence for all that is unknown in these cosmoses around us as this James Webb telescope 
begins to give us new information. And it's funny because if you ask a scientist um, in the press, you know, what's this thing going to show us? They'll usually answer, well, it's going to help us see light in a different way and measure things and see rings around planets that we've never seen. But if they were to answer honestly, the answer is we don't know what it's going to show us. And we're so excited by that, right? It's when we take that leap, like Kittinger did, that we return not to a place we've never been before, but to the place where we are. And as if for the first time, see it clearly, succinctly, and with that spiritual vision that can allow us to step into greater ways of being. What is that leap you're being called to in your life today? What is that little jump that you can make that can begin to transform not just what you see, but how you see? We can all make a choice individually, but in particular today, I want to make an invitation for us to make a leap together as a spiritual community. How does that sound? Thank you, Jeanette. (laughs) And and I have the honor of uh, introducing today our Mile High Initiative for 2022. Uh, This is kind of like a theme for the year. It's something that uh, won't take up all of our programming, but a lot of it. And the initiative is health and well-being. Health and well-being. Let's jump into a greater degree of health and well-being together in 2022. In talking with people, we did a lot of strategic planning with hundreds of people and just listening to congregants. You know what we hear the most? In this crazy, fractured times of pandemics and political divisions and racial injustice and on and on and on, I've lost a sense of physical well-being. I'm losing my emotional well-being. It's hard to stay psychologically well in these times. I'm challenged with work-life balance, relationship balance, parenting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we've heard this, and we want to focus this year on increasing our individual and collective health and well-being. And so there'll be Sunday series on health and well-being. There'll be Wednesday series. There'll be classes that are tailored to health and well-being, workshops, event speakers, our youth curriculum, our small group curriculum. And yet I want to point out something particular today that has to do with the vision that we have for Mile High Church here. And that is the things that you can do every day with Mile High Church for your well-being. I want Mile High Church to be a part of your everyday life. I want your spirituality, first and foremost, (laughs) to be a part of your everyday life beyond Sunday, but you can do it with Mile High Church. We have spiritual practices on the campus here, Monday through Thursday, yoga. You just show up and it's not advanced. Uh, 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 Qigong on Thursdays. When the Omicron settles down, our chapel will be open uh, for meditation almost every day. We have a podcast. We have uh, Insight Timer. How many people have Insight Timer? It's this great meditation app. And we have hundreds of meditations on there. We have something called a Daily Pearl. So you can go onto our website and sign up and get a daily inspirational quote every day. But I invite you to, together, as Mile High Church, let's step into greater health and well-being and make a commitment that a year from now, each and every one of us is going to be a little healthier and a little more well-beingier, too. (laughs) Can you go? Yes? Yes. Even if you think you're perfect now, let's take a little bit of a leap together and become healthier, stronger, willing to see the beauty around us with full faith in one another, in our equipment, in ourselves, and that power greater than we are with us wherever we go. As we move into prayer today, I invite any of our prayer practitioners to stand. Some words from Ernest Holmes to bring us into prayer. Try to relax mentally and physically. When you do this, you will find something very definite taking place in your thought world. Solid facts become fluid. Obstructions and obstacles seem to fall away. You are, in a sense, climbing a ladder of thought which perhaps started in dense confusion, fear, and uncertainty. The first step takes you a little more above this confusion, and now you begin to climb more easily. There is an enthusiastic elasticity in your step. You climb joyously. You find you have passed through the clouds of fear, despair, and doubt. There is light everywhere. 
So giving thanks for that light, we allow it to lift us up beyond any clouds of confusion or limitation, self-judgment or uncertainty into that light of the divine, that power greater than we are that is in truth the heart of our being. We allow this power to reveal to us the panoramic view, the whole picture of our lives that even though so much of it may be unknown to us, is already complete in the heart and mind of God. It only needs demonstrate through each of us as a greater realization of healing, as a deeper, more profound understanding of forgiveness, of a willingness to deepen and grow and change of an openness and willingness to have relationships that have sent stagnant to grow and unfold in deeper, more profound intimacy. Is that willingness to be fully seen by others in the light of our divine truth and to reflect that truth everywhere we go. It's that courage to know that. To know that right here and right now, that divine power that brought us all of the great face and leads us into greater and greater understandings of the cosmos. It tells us to keep going, that this power is better and better, eternally brand new, renewing each of us in the light of its love, its healing, and its grace. We let it become for us, for those that we love, we shine this light into the world, seeing clearly and emphatically what is ours to do here and now. And so it is. Amen. Get ready my soul I'm diving in Get ready my soul I'm diving in kind of love to the sweetest kind of life so get ready get ready my soul thank you Tom Lich Thank you, Van. Hey, Tom, thank you for being our music director here at Mile High Church. We're so grateful for you. And the talk about spirituality and music and the connection you make and all of the support that you bring around you. Thank you. We're going to uh, move uh, into our time of offering today. And, and just a word to our, our community. We're in this uh, pandemic time. We're in this Omicron time. And uh, a lot of our congregants are being affected by this thing. A lot of our staff have been affected by this thing. And thank God, no one that I know of has anything too serious. But we want you to know a spiritual community, if it is serious, that we're here for you right, to reach out for us, that we're here to support you. We are here to help you if you need it. Call our parent care center, email me or Dr. Michelle, call us here at the office. We are here to support you as we get through these most interesting times together, and we will get through them, won't we? Yes, absolutely. And uh, we so appreciate all of your support spiritually and financially to Mile High Church. Thank you for helping us to continue to thrive through this time. Uh, We all know the ways of giving, so I invite you to give that yourself, but the other ways are on the screen. And just a reminder, if you want to give an extra donation today to help in fire relief, that's the 45888 uh, text number, and you do Mile High Space Fire. Uh, I'm sorry, you put the amount that you want to give, Mile High Space Fire, and we can help in that way. So thank you for supporting that. It's so wonderful how we come together as spiritual community. So let's our take our gifts physically or metaphorically and bless them together as we say divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I circulate. And so it is. I'm saying yes, yes, yes to life. I'm saying yes, yes, yes to life. Yes, 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 yes,
Thank you so much. Reverend Simon's going to come out. We're going to do our pen and teller routine. I talk. He stays silent, but it works well. <laughs> uh, we're so glad everyone could be with us uh, today. Again, our healing light service, 5 p.m. in the vote. Check it out. It's a beautiful experience just in person here. Um, again, sign up for a class. You won't regret that you did. They all start the week of January 17th. If you need a scholarship and you're interested, we've got them. Just contact us. Don't not take a class because of money here at Mile High Church. And uh, lastly, again, spiritual practices, Monday through Thursday. You don't have to be an expert or twist yourself in a pretzel, do you, Jeanette? You just show up and they create an awesome space. You walk our labyrinth. If it's a little warmer, uh, we'll be opening up the chapel soon. Make uh, this a spiritual campus for you to grow and deepen in. Uh, with that, if you'd like to stand, we'll say our benediction and do the peace song together. Let us know that with full faith in one another, our equipment, ourselves, and our divine creator, we live magnificent lives. And so it is. Amen.
Happy Sunday, everybody.